getting all my little gear together. You know, the fish like to spawn around vertical stuff, stay around the reeds. Maybe a top 10, you know. Maybe get some of the smarter guys and run for the money if things, a couple things go right. One thing you don't get to skip just because you got an event. It's a household chores, so before I go anywhere, first order of business is to take the garbage off. So we made it. Eight hours later, here we are in Florida. And I think it's called Tavares. So we'll uh, go find our campsite, get started. What's up, folks? First day of practice, time to get started. A nice brisk morning here in Florida. We got the boat uncovered. We got snacks in my Stanley cooler right here. And it's time to get out there. Well, first thing we gotta do is brush my teeth. Got to brush them tooths. Brush my teeth, we can get started. And hopefully have a nice productive day on the water fishing. Yes. Good day, it's gonna be a good week, good day, good year, good life. Let's go. Here's the plan for today. We spent some time here last year and FLW tour and I ended up fishing in Little Harris last year. So this year, we didn't catch check last year, so this year we know we need to catch a little bigger fish. So we're gonna explore in some of the other lakes. Let me tell you a little bit about Harris Chain. First of all, Harris Chain is a chain of a couple different lakes for you people that don't know about the Harris Chain. So you have the main lake, Lake Harris. There's Little Harris, which is not really divided. It's just a really a creek or cove off of the Harris, a big Lake Harris. You got canals that connect to canals and locks that connect to other lakes. So you got Lake uh, Beauclair, Lake Dora, Apopka, Griffin, which is like the Kissimmee of the Kissimmee chain. You got Lake Griffin here. This is kind of the most popular, has the most habitat and so forth. So, um, and there may be one, Lake Eustace. So there's like five or six lakes that you got a choice of fishing here. Little small lakes and some of them are bigger. Harris and Griffin, are the biggest lakes on the chain. Well, Eustace is pretty big too, but that's not the point. The tournament was one on Harris last time. I fished in Harris. Um, Griffin is typically where the damage is done. You got a lock to Griffin though, so it takes a little bit of your fishing time. It's a real small lock and a real irritable lock master is what I hear. I had judged it by my own experience, but that's what I hear from a lot of people. So. I think we're going to split my practice. We have three days to practice, off day on Wednesday. We're going to practice today, which is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, off day on Wednesday. So I've got three days to practice. I'm going to spend at least three quarters or half a day on Harris. I already know where I want to go if I'm going to catch him on Harris. But I'm going to spend most of my practice time a long, long, long away in Beauclair. And I think it's Dora, Popka way way away looking for something weird and then the bulk of my practice time the most on griffin because it's got the most best grass to do it's got the most habitat it's got the most houses it's got the most neighborhoods so it's going to have the most fish so we'll spend most of my time probably in griffin looking for them god dog on big old florida bass well, here we are at lake griffith and there's a pile of boats here I'm just gonna start right here outside of the canal where I just launched because it's way too foggy to go anywhere. And uh, just wait for that fog to lift and get out and look around a little bit, but I'm not going anywhere. Him big, him real big. He got a mouthful of top water plug. Got boats all around me, so I can't really. I can't really do much. 
hunt. That was cool. Oh God, dude. Look at that doggone thing right there. <laughs> and this little top water bait across this high drill edge. She came up on it. <laughs> so, a little midday report. Um, guess what? Fishing has actually been okay today. Uh, usually I start off in practice and you just kind of get the whole homes for the first day and a half or so and then you kind of start to put things together after a day or so but today I caught a couple good fish and I think the fish do, do seem to be biting a little bit so uh, I still got a long way to go we got to figure out how to see in a lot of fish they're not exactly easy to catch seeing a lot of fish on beds a lot of fish paired up so I'm like fan casting around on some of these flats and so forth. Caught a couple on a frog, I caught a couple uh, pitching on a stick bait, and I caught a couple on my wacky rig. Caught a few on everything. Caught a couple on a speed worm. A little bit of everything this morning. So, but it looks like there's gonna be some fish biting, but it just kind of got to get dialed in to whatever the, the actual deal is gonna be for this week. But very optimistic, man. It looks like it's gonna be a fun week. I haven't found anything on my juice, the swim jig or anything like that, which is the way I love to catch them is on a swim jig, but there's some fish biting. Gonna have to catch some big ones. Big, big. Mucho grandes. Mucho grandes is what we need this week. So I'm gonna keep looking. I just kind of went way, way back in this backwater. So I'm trolling my way out so we can uh, get out here on the main lake and find something else. A little bit bigger, better. And more grande. Well, that one ate Kermie pretty good, I'd say. That's not a big fish. But the way it choked that frog, I like that a lot. So overall, productive day. This is about the end of day one of practice here, and I'm just spending the last few minutes of, uh, of the day idling around, just looking for a few offshore pla uh, places to fish. I think I may end up sight fishing in this tournament, or something to the tune of it. Something that's got to do with uh, bed and fish more, more than likely, but I want to have a backup, so I'm out here idling around. We actually have to be in at 6.50 today, it's 6.32. And just before I run in, I'm just going to spend a few minutes uh, marking a few places that I can, um, you know, like some shell bed stuff, clean bottom stuff, and looking for a little bit of hot offshore hydrilla where I spent the last few minutes trying to do that. But uh, don't know how it's going to shake out. I still got to find a lot more than what I've got. But um, it feels good to have one productive day. Most of the time, dude, practice is just raw for the first couple of days and, you know, to the ninth hour trying to figure something out. So we're going to go ahead and run in. Bill Taylor says we got to be in by 6.50, so I better get started, get in. day of practice folks today is the climbing day we got to do some stuff we got to catch some fish we got to find some fish we got to find some on beds we got to find some that can blind cast we got to get a lot done today so here's the plan i am going back to lake griffin where i had the best day of practice run you back through i didn't really do a lot of filming on this practice period here day one started right here in griffin griffin is kind of known as the best lake um, probably got the best habitat, got the most grass, got the best grass. So I spent a lot of time practicing in Griffin on day one. Here's the thing, we had a really, really bad fog delay on the first day of practice. And honestly, I couldn't really move around until about 10 o'clock or so. Day two, we went to Harris. I wanted to make sure that I had something close to the ramp because I'm waiting to put my boat in. So that's why you see me keep looking. I uh, wanted to make sure I had something close to the ramp just in case we end up with a three hour fog delay and I don't have time to get to Griffin. So I practiced in Harris, boo-boo, boo-boo, 
the FUBU. It was all bad. So I, I did catch one big one, a couple of the shorts. Worst case scenario, I think I could go to Harris and catch a limit. But now I'm back at Griffin and we're gonna try to double down on what I found the first day. That's the plan. Let's go get it done, boy. Look at Gus the Gummy Gator right there. Jeez. That's a pretty darn big one right there. Y'all think I should get up there and try to flip that mat or just leave that one alone? Let me tell you, I'm leaving that mat alone. Let's see if we can get him to move. Let's see if we can get him to move. Probably eat me. I'm scared the crap out of me. How big you think that thing is? Let's see. He didn't budge, dude. I threw at him. He didn't even budge. I haven't. I haven't truly and honestly fished offshore. Uh, much. I've been concentrating shallow. I fished a little bit offshore. I caught a big one yesterday offshore, but I haven't really and truly fished offshore. So I'm. I just found a little place that's interesting. Found a little eelgrass. There's a lot of hydrilla out here right now, but there's not much eelgrass at all. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna completely do like a 180 for about the next two or three hours. That way, at the end of practice, I know that I gave this offshore stuff a chance. So I'm gonna tie on chatterbait, two different sizes of chatterbait, a uh, little square bill crankbait and a rattle trap, and I'm just gonna burn some over top of some of this eelgrass. I just caught two on a speed worm, so uh, I'm gonna try to catch them on some other stuff. So when you're out here in the middle like this, this I, I think these, I really think these fish spawn out here. I think I'm starting to figure it out. We got here. Offshore, you can see miles of nothing. This is where the big ones live, y'all. Oh! Ah! It's so big! Last day, it's the last hour or so of practice. I'm back in the marsh, <laughs> just looking for some fish, and uh, this is about the best I can come up with. A little two pounder at the end of the day. It's been tough, folks. I thought, um, beginning of the practice, you saw how it started out. I thought fishing was going to be really good, really easy. We're going to get out here and catch a bunch of fish. Saw some fish, was catching some in the pads, catching some sight fishing, catching a few on top. And today, there ain't none of that working. None of it. I fished offshore a good bit, out there cranking, uh, throwing a big speed worm. Caught a lot of little ones out there. So then I backed up back into the marsh where I fished the first day. And I caught one little two pounder and caught a few flipping. Oh, oh, little guy. That little guy back. Over. So that's a wrap folks, it's over, it's done with. I'm about to put it back on the trailer. Don't have a lot going, but we're just gonna have to rely a little bit on some intuition. We're gonna have to just fish what we know is right, go to areas where we know fish should be, and then hope for the best. like that. I like my music. I'm listening to a little snarky puppy while I get my tackle ready. Huge snarky puppy fan. You know probably most of you guys don't uh, probably don't know who snarky puppy is. It's all good. So it's Florida. Today is rigging day. Getting all my little gear together. I've already figured this out in this tournament fishing thing. Most of the time during practice, you're gonna have situations where 
you don't really know what's going to happen. Just kind of double check on some things and try to find some more fish, trying to expand on some areas. Uh, it didn't go so good. We didn't catch a lot of fish. Uh, I say we. I didn't catch a lot of fish. I uh, found, tried to spend a little time offshore just to kind of, so I could leave this tournament knowing that I practiced that. Because I think a lot of damage is going to be done offshore this time. Uh, and I caught some fish out there, but mostly small ones offshore. No big ones. And when I say small ones, some that are not even keepers. And a lot of uh, one pound, one pound fish. Like the ones that you don't want to go an hour and a half for, hour 45 minutes for. So, I think what I'm going to do is spend my time doing things that make sense. It's been cold in Florida. We're in a warming trend. And there's just, there's no way that there shouldn't be fish spawning right now. No way. There's no way fish shouldn't be spawning. There's got to be some fish spawning somewhere. And so I'm going to spend my time fishing near spawning grounds. I'm going to be looking. And I'm going to be kind of blind casting. And hoping that I run into a couple. I'm not, I didn't see many like that in practice. But as warm as it is. And it being springtime it's been cold they haven't really had a chance to spawn clearly some have spawned because i've been seeing a little bit of fry but i'm going to spend my time doing that you may not find anything in practice that you know for certain is good so that's where you got to start relying on some common sense so that's how i got to the idea of staying around the spawning grounds you know the fish like to spawn around vertical stuff, stay around the reeds, um, you know, do a little, little flipping in some of the Kissimmee grass, and surely that can't be, surely that can't be a bad look in Florida. Uh, you know, if that's a failure on day two, I'll go offshore. I've got some places where I think it looks good, but it seems like there's just bugs up there right now. And uh, we'll see how that works out. So that's the plan. But the uh, practice was a little tricky. Maybe a top 10, who knows. Maybe give some of, some of these Florida guys a run for their money if things, a couple things go right. All right, so it's been a long day of rigging, getting tackled together chatting with buddies a little bit trying to put together a good solid game plan it's over and done with now we've had practice been to the meeting got everything gassed up done all the work tomorrow starts the first day of the derby i'm kind of excited about it in some kind of weird way sometimes when you go out there and you put the work try hard as you can hard as you can hard as you can hard as you can and it looks like nothing's gonna work out Sometimes you get out there and it just comes to you. So I hope tomorrow is going to be one of those days. I don't know yet. So you have to wait until the next video to find out. I'm going to get some rest, get up in the morning and be a freaking beast. See y'all.